Good evening, friends and family. You are listening to Dr. Henley, and today I'm going to talk to you about the very unknown, so-called invisible disability, the neurotypical syndrome. Now, for anybody who doesn't really understand what neurotypical syndrome is, today I'm going to run you through some of the more early to late development markers of the neurotypical syndrome. Now, there is a lot of things that people don't really understand about neurotypical people. Um, We usually refer to them as NASPIs, and there are a lot of difficulties that come with neurotypical children. Uh, There is some debate about in um, in the community about whether there are different levels of being a neurotypical, and they all represent and, and define as very simple but important distinguishable attributes in the human mind. So today I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of a breakdown on the type of things that you'll be looking out for when you believe that your child may be suffering from uh, the neurotypical illness. I have a uh, a list of um, documents here to uh, give you an idea of of the type of things that you can look for. So, in 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 comparison to you know a normal human being, a neurotypical, firstly, uh, shows some level of lack lack of logical development at a young age, and it can be quite impairing for them. One of the difficulties with mainly neurotypical based schools is that there will be a lot of inter-social difficulties. Neurotypicals, when they, when they band together and when they reach the age of teenagehood, tend to fall, to put it lightly and not, not to offend anyone, into a rut where they are very, very much focused on what everybody else is doing what what everybody thinks of them, whether what they're doing is considered to be cool, which is a uh, a term that is uh, used by the neurotypical population, um, to in in some some vast toxic way to to normalize what's considered to be an attractive thing or an attractive quality or an attractive person. The Neurotypical people, the children, will congregate in small social bubbles. These small social bubbles are very difficult for people to penetrate, or other children to penetrate. These circles tend to display a lot of dominance hierarchy. So they will form some form of primitive bands together, they will try and attack other groups, they will actively vet and judge and get into the minds of other people in order to make sure that the right people enter their group. Now one of the the, the sort of the toxicity from this this um, pathological behavior is that there are many many children, whether they are normal or neurotypical, that aren't in any group. So they will either default to a, a much lower status group, which severely affects their uh, their social life and their social development, but they will also tend to act out for attention or act out for some form of social gratification. <clears throat> now, this is just one example of the many things that um, people with neurotypical syndrome may do. There is a lot of issues around uh, emotions at that age. Although they do tend to show a heightened ability to understand emotions and social groupings, they also seek out and follow their emotions in sometimes a very pathological uh, way. This could mean through bullying other people in other groups, in order to give themselves some form of self-esteem boost. 
but also to really re- reinforce their own independence and bypass some of the logical uh, disabilities that they 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 show in in that type of age there are a lot of different high- highlighted malformations and uh difficulties one of which uh, appears in early early teenagehood and carries on for the for the rest of a person's life because of course everybody is born as a neurotypical and they are neurotypical children but every neurotypical child grows up to be a neurotypical adult and we need to be aware of this neurotypical teenagers and children tend to have a mild intellectual disability meaning that as opposed to a normal person they would have eight points of IQ lower than your average uh, which in the grand scheme of things isn't a large amount but it still can it should still should be considered to be some form of intellectual disability um, hence the the need for funds and and trusts in order to make sure that these these um these children get on in life well it seems to be it seems to me that the incessant following of emotions and higher placement in social status causes a lot of malfunctions in society in social groups these very emotionally driven um almost almost impulsive uh, characters that um inhabit a lot of schools when we move up into into late teenagehood there seems to be a difficulty when it comes to open-mindedness and empathy neurotypical individuals tend to feel very strongly about placing themselves higher in a certain level or group and for a lot of individuals a lot of normal children this may be a problem the more rampant or more outwardly expressing uh, neurotypicals ones that show a lot of traits um, that we would consider to be pathological tend to be the ones who cause others the most distress things as i've said before about bullying social isolation whereby any uh, deviation from uh, the certain norms in that per- that uh, affected individuals head um, becomes a guideline for the amount of abuse that one can give or one social group can give to a normal healthy child of course it's it's more founded in in logic in our society that people um will go about their life picking up on certain individual things uh, certain interests in order to work on things that they enjoy whereas the uh, neurotypical person tends to go through a lot of cycles of difficulty because they they feel the need to go for the most appropriate and most normative way of living um and henceforth they will uh, bash and they will try and pick out those people whose interests are most unlike their own in adulthood the neurotypical uh, disability this um sort of hidden hidden disability as we like to call it tends to affect uh, lives in in a very negative way uh, it makes them specifically not not of course not all of them but it makes them specifically difficult uh, to work with they tend to have a lower attention span which can make it difficult for them to focus on topics of interest which i know is something that many of us find quite normal and easy but we have to be very considerate of this and also they tend to mimic and they tend to pass over the social um deformities the the difficulties that they they have socially the pathological problems and they transfer that into the workplace which can make life for a lot of people and um, a lot of normal people working very difficult in terms of the the social realm that we live in um most people tend to be quite um they like to have their own space they like to follow up on their own interests and of course now and again 
we all like to meet up for a talk for maybe one or two hours. Whereas for a neurotypical person, this need for social interaction is very incessant, um, almost to the point in, of pathological in some senses. They will div divulge information about other people um, in the workplace or in their life that is not deemed to be appropriate for uh, modern society. They will also tend to act very emotional in, in situations um, to do with conflict instead of trying to talk about it or um, approach someone with authority and um, resolve the issue in a calm manner. There tends to be a lot of traits of BPD in this neurotypical syndrome where they will, um, let's say, blow it out of proportion. Dis despite the logical and, and directness of, of normal people, they find it very difficult to handle. Now, this tends in our society to uh, isolate them. Of course, in, in the typical neurotypical schools, they, um, they thrive in this behavior. But as soon as they go out into the real world and they realize that these pathological social mechanisms aren't working, then that's when we start to see the issues. We start to see the issues with un unemployment and um, particularly isolation, which is um, very sort of contrary to the, um, the mechanisms that they had at school. And they will tend to fall into relationships, um, ones that aren't particularly healthy. They, have, they don't talk about their feelings and they don't modulate their behavior in any way or at least not as much um, as a regular person. And that can be very difficult for them to develop long-standing relationships based on uh, logic and based on direct communication of wants and needs. So it can be very difficult for them to navigate in all sorts of environments in later life. Many of them will take to um, consuming legal highs, such as alcohol. This alcohol can of course, enhance, which is, is particularly bad because it can enhance the already emotional, already over, overly social mind of the neurotypical. Of course, it's, it's different to uh, when a normal person would consume alcohol, probably make them a little bit more relaxed. That's why people do it. But for them, the, the addiction starts from the the effects on their social life and this is of course not a all-consuming statement for every single neurotypical people. I've seen a lot of uh, people come into my practice and um, talk, talk about the, the struggles of it and um, behind every, every neurotypical there is, behind every diagnosis of a neurotypical there is another neuro person inside that we can relate to. It's the, the nature of the, the disability and the nature of the difficulties and the traits that go along with it make it excessively hard to um, treat these individuals and bring them back to a more logical and thought-based and rational uh, view that we all, we all know that is important for healthy living. Although their social abilities seem to um, be accelerated to some degree, um, this does not follow suit for their logical um, basis. So they will be very far behind in terms of um, developing morals and understanding different walks of life and difficulties and being a bit more open-minded. And for some that can be quite debilitating, especially if they reach the legal age and they don't particularly have a good awareness of the consequences of things. Obviously, a lot of normal people have a good idea of what does what and what dangers lie in, in something. But a group of neurotypicals together, they tend to exacerbate these um, sort of risk-taking, emotion-driven behaviours. And it can be very toxic for the person or people, in, people involved that get roped into this sort of um, social peer pressure which is um, not really seen in, in regular society. There are a lot of difficulties um, about a neurotypical disorder, but I think with an, with an open mind and, and 
an idea of, of trying to work out what's similar and what's different, we will be able to understand a little bit better what's going on in their heads. There seems to be a large precedent in, in patients that I've dealt with, dealt with with neurotypical disorder that they don't really recognize these flaws. Um, there seems to be a bit of a um, streamlined um, black and white approach to this where if there is something that is considered to be um, mainstream then it is therefore accepted as part of a culture and of course that is not the case and anything to do with illegal activities or, or consumption of dangerous chemicals and, and toxins and compounds there always has to be some level of restriction on that and there also has to be some level of support in place to make sure that these uh, neurotypical individuals do not affect others, um, other regular humans in that group. Despite all the negatives that come with uh, the neurotypical syndrome, there are a lot of important, good um, aspects of being, of, of being neurotypical, of being an Aspie, one of which is um, a very high level of emotional understanding. So they would make very good people to talk to, people to get to know. Once you've got past the the um, social groups, once you've got past the uh, the mask of um, what's acceptable and what isn't, and really start to get to the meat of who that person is, you can have access to a lot of the quick-firing, social-orientated, emotional thoughts that could be of great utility to yourself for the future. It's just about bringing those thoughts out and teasing them out and applying some of the common sense logic to those thoughts. And um, there's been some great results with that. It's a very important thing to do. They are also some of the most loving um, individuals on the planet. They uh, they fry very much on, on feeling as at one with a group. Um, so if you tend to have a singular group that you uh, meet up with on a regular basis, they will be likely to put a lot of input into that group and make sure that new things within reason, of course, are um, introduced to the group for people to try. They have a tendency of adding a little bit more spice to friendship or a relationship um, within, with their tendency towards impulsivity, um, a tendency towards uh, novel seeking behavior in a very sometimes maybe in a pathological and brash way um, but it can encourage other people in, people in that friend group and in that relationship to try things that they would normally not consider um, following their routine their regular routine that uh, we all follow they also have an extraordinary uh, capability for executive functioning uh, meaning that they are very good at making snap decisions about things and processing information at a remarkable speed um, so that that ability would be, be more suited for tasks that require a lot of organization and management. Um, we, we see a lot of uh, people with neuro neurotypical syndrome organizing for events, uh, putting on parties, bringing the communities together so they can do a lot of good um, in society as long as the, the negatives of the disability are made up for and the things that affect other people in our society are minimized uh, by proper education at a young age. I realize that there is not an, as much um, media attention on the neurotypical syndrome and it's uh, something that I very much strive to uh, change and improve. We need a lot more awareness around neurotypical syndrome. We need people to understand neurotypicals, understand where they're coming from in order to be um, empathetic towards it. So providing that empathy towards them can sometimes be a little bit difficult. Um, you'd have to expect that you would have to give more in the instance, uh, more empathy in the, in the instance in order to get a sufficient response from them. But there are a lot, a lot of things that we can talk about in the future scientific uh, talks as I'm doing now and if if you want to see some more work uh, by myself and re read more about the uh, neurotypical um, disorder 
um, I would encourage you to look up um, the other videos on my YouTube channel to make sure that you are fully aware of uh, what you need to do. Whether you're a parent, whether you're someone who's suffering from neurotypical syndrome, um, whether you are friends with someone or in a relationship with someone with neurotypical syndrome, it's always important to get up to date with these things and learn um, more personal and important understandings of the neurotypical syndrome just for healthy living and, and proper integration of these people into into our society. I hope that you found this useful and um, I wish you all the best and hope that I can talk to you again soon. Thank you.